Hi, I'm Rebecca Metz, and you are watching Ken Boxer Live on TVSB. Cheers. Cheers. Yay! Terry Riken Realtor proudly presents Ken Boxer Live. From the American Riviera in Santa Barbara, California, it's Ken Boxer Live, Santa Barbara's one and only entertainment talk show. Let's welcome the host of the show, Ken Boxer. Wow. Thank you. What a crowd. What a crowd. Thank you so very much. Wow, that's really nice. I'm Ken Boxer. This is Ken Boxer Live. Sitting next to me, if you remember, just three months ago, she was here as our guest, but she's here with us donning a different hat tonight. She is my special co-host, Valentina Yazakova, the Miss Globe Europe 2018, everybody. Thank you. It's so good to see you. Good to see you. So glad to have you back. Valentina, how long is your reign going to be? Oh, you know, good time doesn't last forever. So I will stay uh, Miss Globe Europe until December this year, because in December they will have new competition and they will choose a new Miss Globe Europe. Oh, you're a tough act to follow. They're going to have a hard time finding <laughs> the next one. But you know, I, let me tell you about somebody who we want on the show. We've been inviting. Oh, yeah. Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> Ellen, we want you on our show. We know you're just a mile away. If anybody knows her, anybody can help us, we would love to have her sitting right here in our studio and enjoying a nice little 30-minute chat. So Ellen, we hope, don't we want her here, everybody? <laughs> right. Yes. Now, I have to, I want to ask you, Valentina, who is our guest tonight on our show. Tell everybody. Ken, we have a very special guest tonight, one of the busiest actresses in Hollywood, Rebecca Matt. Yes. Don't go away. We will be back just in a few seconds. All right. Ken Boxer Live is brought to you by the following sponsors. Zodos Bowling and Beyond and Z's Tap House for the best in family entertainment. Gustafson Dance, meeting the highest standards in dance training. The Eagle Inn, a family-owned hotel near the beach in Santa Barbara. And now, back to our show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome back. Joining us tonight is one of the hardest working actresses in Hollywood. You've seen her on the Disney comedy series Coop and Cammie, Ask the World, Showtime's comedy series Shameless, and the FX comedy Better Things. Let's welcome to the show, everybody, Rebecca Metz. <laughs> Santa Barbara is not new to you, I've heard. It is not. I, my husband and I got married at the Santa Barbara Zoo in 2011, and we're also wine drinkers, so we're up here a good bit. You know, it's <laughs> just not far from L.A., and it's a good place to come to escape when you need a little little breather, get away from it, the hectic It sure work is. Stuff. We all know that. We're all Santa Barbarans, except... Um, Va Valentina. Yeah, it, it was Maryland. my second time here. But I have a question for you. Okay. Mary in the zoo. Yeah. You are married in the zoo. Mm -hmm. How did you end up marrying in the zoo in Santa Barbara? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when, when we got engaged, I was not a person who like spent my life fantasizing about my wedding. I wasn't sure I wanted to get married. So when we got engaged, I was like, flooded with all the things I did not want. Mm. So it was like, I do not want those chairs, I do not want a buffet, I'm not throwing a garter bell, I'm not doing all of this. And I didn't, I wanted something unusual. I didn't want to get married in a place that kind of cranks out mm. weddings all the time, although, you know, the zoo does a fair amount of them. But I just wanted something that felt different. a little different. I wanted something that was not in LA, that was a little bit of a trip for us, but not too far, that would feel mm. like a vacation for everyone. And I was just online, kind of poking around, and I, I just saw 
the zoo as a listing of a place you get married. And I was like, and honestly, I saw a picture of this bride and groom with a giraffe right between them, just <laughs> smiling, this big giraffey smile. And I was like, that's it, done. That was it. So, and I was you, convinced. You probably love animals too. I do, yes. And yeah. we ended up going, I mean, we didn't know this at the time, but we went to South Africa for our honeymoon and did a safari. Oh, so it turned into like nice. a theme. Mm -hmm. So nice there. Yeah. Now, had you been to Santa Barbara prior to getting married? Yeah, I actually did. When I first got to LA, um, there was a winery up here called Bedford Thompson that is now Bedford. The Bedford half still has a tasting room in Los Olivos but had a property with a kind of outdoor amphitheater in it, and we would do Shakespeare on holiday weekends, and we would camp out, and Stefan Bedford would cook uh, a big meal theme to the, to the play, and so I've been coming up here for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Well, but prior to Santa Barbara, you were, my research suggests, you were at Carnegie Mellon. <laughs> that is true. I went to car college at Carnegie Mellon in And Pittsburgh. you don't just get into Carnegie Mellon. There's a whole background of, you need to be, really studied already in acting, right? You don't, they don't just It's let very you come competitive. In. They get, um, I think it's up to 20,000 submissions now for, for each class, and the, my class was 40 people. So, so it's a very competitive <laughs> school. Thank you. But Thank you. prior to that, were you, were you an act, were involved in acting in high school? Yeah, oh yeah. I did tons of theater in high school. I did, um, I took piano lessons and both my parents were singers sort of as a hobby and so I was always around growing up around music and I went to arts camps and mm -hmm. you know got involved um, when when their choruses would do like a musical and need kids I would volunteer and so I sort of got indoctrinated early and yeah did as much theater as I could through junior high school and high school and well you brought with you uh, a clip I did of, uh, we're going to see uh, Coop and Cammie mm -hmm. um, can you give us the lead into that? What what we're about to see and how that first how you got the part? Oh, God, I mean, the part. It's it's funny. You know, I've been in LA for twenty years, acting and sort of building up credits and doing guest spots on various shows, and and trying and trying to trying to get a series regular. And then this just sort of happened. It was two auditions. It was like the easiest thing in the world. It's it's funny that you can, you know, work so hard at something and then it just kind of happens. Um, and so on Coop and Cammie, I play Jenna Rather, who is a mother of four, plus a best friend who's always around. Um, so kind of, it's five kids and me on a Disney Channel show. I'm a single working mom, and so this clip is Jenna is sort of juggling all of the needs of the various kids that she has to support, and they're all, you know, they get a little jealous, and some feel neglected, and she's doing her best. Okay, well, let's watch. Rebecca Metz. Where are you going? Cammy has dance practice. All you do these days is shuttle her to practices. I guess we know who the favorite is. Cooper, be fair. Wait, why do I always have to take the bus to violin lessons? <laughs> if we're doing this now, I have sensed you pulling away lately. No one is a favorite. It's just a busy week. This Tara girl is all about winning regionals. They're working on a new move. It goes like this. <laughs> I don't think it does. I'm gonna go work on those dimples. I was gonna ask you to take me to pick up some stuff for my 499th show, but I guess you're too busy. Look, I'm sorry I can't be everywhere at once. I'm doing my best, sweetie. I'll take you after, okay? Thanks, Mom. Wow, it is gonna be a busy few days. Charlotte, can you help me look after Ollie? Sure, Mom, no problem. Well. It may be a bigger problem than you're used to. He's not taking baths and he's refusing to eat any veggies. Bigfoot never took a bath or ate veggies. <laughs> he always says that. I don't know what it means. <laughs> well, that's how much, everybody. You're watching Ken Boxer Live. Valentina. Oh, I love this move. <laughs> <laughs> They have decided that, that I can dance on this show. Wait, was that ad -libbed be... or was that uh, in the script? It, oh, it's in the script. They put, you know, Jenna does Otherwise, terrible dance moves. Do. They put it in there all oh, the God. time. And then I come up with something, and then they bring in a choreographer who's like, why don't we do this instead? Yeah, awesome. <laughs> anyway, I have a question for you. Okay. So you're working with kids. Mm -hmm. How is it? Do you have any issues, challenges? I mean... You know, there's pros and cons to everything. They are, they're wonderful. They have so much energy. They're so excited. And, you know, kids aren't jaded. A lot of the adults that you work with, 
have been around for a long time and a, mm. can be a little over it. And the kids are just so excited. Disney Channel is like yeah. the pinnacle of kid mm. acting. So they are so thrilled to be there. And their energy and their spirit is just infectious. On the other hand, they're new at this. For most of them, this is their first job. Mm. And so not these kids, but some of the, the kids we've had as guests on the show, oh, yeah. you have to sort of be like, point your face at the camera. <laughs> you know, we're working on like a pretty, a pretty basic yeah. level. But it's wonderful. I get to be a little bit of a teacher too. Yeah. Were you kind of paternal with them though, as a parent a offset? A little bit. I mean, their parents are required to be there just offset, and so I don't have to do too much okay. parenting. But once in a while, you know, my TV role as a mom turns into a little bit of a real role as a mom, and I'll shush them or give them an acting tip if they're having trouble with something and try to help them, you know. But on what Valentina was suggesting or asking, is there anything different that you would actually have to do on the set with kids for you as an actor versus... Um, you know, when they're all adults, because I've been told that it's very difficult to act with children because they can upstage you like that. Well, yeah, I mean, they have, it's funny, when you go to acting school, part of what you're trying to do is get back to your natural sort of childlike state. We get in our own way and we're not vulnerable and they have that childlike thing already because they're kids. Um, the, the challenge just on a very technical level, is that they can't work overtime. And so instead of what we usually do on an adult show where it takes as long as it takes and you work long hours and, you know, you get it done, with kids you're on a clock. Like, and once their time is up there, you don't get a minute extra. So it, it there's a different challenge in that, mm -hmm. you know. And you've worked on, on many shows. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed now you're on two shows. And are there comedies? Do you prefer comedy? Is it harder for you as an actress to do comedy? I prefer comedy. It's harder for me not to do comedy. I've been in situations where I've been supposed to be doing drama and people are laughing. And like I'm trying to, <laughs> and what happens is, you know, you're trying to get them to stop laughing so you get more serious, which of course makes it funnier. So I kind of have the opposite problem. I think I naturally have a comic sensibility and, um, no matter what I do, it tends to come out. So I think <laughs> I've done some drama in my in my career, but it, more comedy. and more it's comedy, which is fine by me. And are you finding that uh, when you're auditioning, are you getting the parts for comedy shows now more than any other? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of what I'm getting now, and you'll see, I think, in the second clip, there's, I think television's in this place right now where things don't fit neatly into one category or the other, into drama or comedy, and so, and I really like that because I think that's how <laughs> life is. And so um, I, I'm doing a lot, Shameless is a perfect example of something, it's sometimes it's very serious, sometimes it's funny, it isn't one thing or the other, and everyone who's on that show has to be able to do both. And that's kind of what I end up doing a lot. And Coop and Cammy, we have some some heartfelt stuff, some emotional stuff too. So even that show, we do a little bit of both. Well, you mentioned a, the a next video. It's a perfect time to set us into that. Segway. What Can you describe yeah. this next video we're about to see? Yeah, so this is a show called Better Things on FX, um, which is wonderful. We're in our third season right now. And um, I play, the lead character is Sam Fox, played by Pamela Adlon, who is the showrunner. She directed every episode. She runs the writer's room. It's incredible. Um, she plays a single working mom and working actor, which she is in life. And I play Tressa, who is a close friend of hers and her manager. And so this scene is kind of some things in our professional relationship are coming to a head. Okay, let's watch. Rebecca Metz. Or the opera. Hello. How'd it go? The reading? No, the, the opera. Reading. Yes, well, the reading. There's a lot of, well, there's a lot Mayor of buzz. Says Mayor says they're going to take it to Broadway. Oh, Mayor's there. Oh, Mayor's there. Yeah, she's the one who thought of yeah, me for this. Yeah, she's the one who thought of me for this. You know, she figured, you know, she figured that the playwright and I might connect, so... Mayor told you this? Yeah, Mayor told you this? after the thing. Yeah, after the thing. What? Do you want to do it? Do you want to do it? This is good. But this is good. I'm going to make good. this an easy conversation. I'm going to make this an easy conversation for you. What conversation? You obviously feel the need you to move on to greener pastures. You obviously feel the need to move on to greener pastures. And I get it. We've been together a long time. Respect and we both respect each other, but you feel the need to I don't. I'm not saying I don't. That. I'm not saying that. that. Have I said that? And I value our friendship too much to stand in your way. This conversation has been a long time coming since the movie. And 
Wait, 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 Valentina. <laughs> different, different <laughs> yeah, shows. Yeah, very different. Mm -hmm. So actually my question is there are many like fresh actors who are just starting their career and they want to play, for example, in uh, comedy, mm -hmm. yes, but their role are better for, for example, drama. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Can you give any advice for the new actors, for fresh actors? What should they do? Should they go for comedy if mm -hmm. they are better in comedy or should they work harder and do what they want to do? I mean, I think it has to do with what you do naturally and part of the process of, of studying acting is learning what mm -hmm. your strengths are and who you are as an actor. And, I, and, you know, when you go out into the world professionally, people are going to gravitate towards what yeah. you do well. Um, but also... There's also a lot of value in challenging yourself and, and working on the stuff that you don't do well so that you can stretch yourself a mm. little bit. Absolutely. You know? But yeah. when you're auditioning, I, I've got to ask you this. You've been on so many things. I mm -hmm. loved you in Nip Talk. Thank by you. The way. That Thank was you. so good. That, that was, was dark. dark. <laughs> when, this, when the Disney show came up, I sort of said to them, like, they've Googled me, right? <laughs> like, they know. <laughs> Because that, that was racy. Right, I was like, was. I don't want any kids looking me up and me getting in trouble. But here, here's, this is to that point. Um, you've done so many auditions, and we mentioned a little bit of audition already. I just wanted to find out how difficult is it for you to go for an audition? You said this last time you only had two auditions. Mm -hmm. But as an actor, you have to audition. You have to probably um, go before casting directors that are perhaps, you know, 20 years younger than you, mm -hmm. never have seen your work, mm -hmm. don't, you know, and here you are, an established actress who's very work, you work all the mm -hmm. time, and you have to deal with this. How does, how do you handle that? I mean, that's, that's kind of the biggest part of my job, or has been for a long time. So I think, uh, for me, I had to figure out how to love auditioning, because if you don't love it, you're just torturing yourself. Um, and for me, the, that, that two minutes, or however long it is, for that two minutes, the role is mine. And so I prepare it like it's mine, and I go in and sort of go, this is what I would do with it. You've got eight or ten other people out here ready to show you what they would do with it, and you get to pick. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you pick me, fantastic. If you pick someone else, that's okay. But I'm, I'm an actor because I love acting, and yeah. an audition is a chance to do a little acting. So but you never say, like, why didn't I get the part? Sure, sometimes <laughs> you do, although I think I've gotten pretty good at leaving it behind you know my husband has learned he doesn't even ask me about them because I'll get home and I'll go how'd it go and I'm sort of like what oh fine like I it's already I left it in the car yeah. or are you, you ever know? surprised getting the part thinking I, I didn't read it too well oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah some you you think you bombed it and you get it you think you aced it and you never hear anything I mean that's part yeah. of it that's part of it but how much of the show like Coop and Cammy do you can you ad lib and create part of the role or are you are they pretty strict with Disney that you have to go exactly what the writers write. They're pretty strict, although um, on a multicam, they'll write alt lines, like while we're shooting, they'll say, try saying this and try saying this, and once in a while, if I have an idea, I can say, can I say this? And sometimes I'll say no, <laughs> and, sometimes, <laughs> and sometimes they'll say yes. So it's not a lot of improv or ad-libbing, but we can be a little experimental in terms of giving them a few different options, and then they can see what they want to use in the final edit. But do you ever find yourself falling into, since you're on two very popular shows, <laughs> you ever find yourself falling into the, into the mindset, oh my God, I'm, I'm in my wrong character among the character of the other show. It would be really hard to mix those <laughs> characters up. There's very different shows. I do have to be careful about uh, which show, which set I can curse on, you know? Because uh -huh. Better Things uh -huh. is a very grown-up set, and Coop and Cammy is <laughs> not okay. Right, so I do right. try and, you know, set my professional boundaries differently depending on which set I'm on but the characters the vibe of those two shows is so different that I, I haven't had a problem keeping my character straight Valentina? oh yeah I have one question regarding the castings have you ever had any mean casting director who was really rude with you yeah. because uh, I, I, I was in this situation yeah. there was one casting director who didn't like my lipstick 
Do they say that to you? <laughs> yeah. In the room? Yeah. They said that's it to crazy. Me. Yeah. I've had casting directors take phone calls in the middle of my audition. I've had people come in the room yeah. in the middle of but the audition. But directly saying something? Um, not that I remember. If they did, I just sort of put it out of my mind. I mean, I, I, there are casting directors who I would swear hated me. And then you book the part, and you're like, well, I guess I didn't yeah. hate me that much, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, sometimes, sometimes they're cold audiences, yeah. not but how friendly. How have you been able to maintain in this business? I mean, you've worked a long mm -hmm. time in this business. Can I ask? Twenty over twenty years, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah? Um, how have you been able to maintain that? Because it's you know, it just doesn't happen. You don't see actors on television, on stage, screen for that long a period of time. Yeah. How do you do it? What's I'm really secret? stubborn. <laughs> that's yeah, really that's what it, I am incredibly stubborn like I was not going to give up that's yeah. all it is you know I think I think the, the more positive thing to say is tenacity mm -hmm. I think this is what I love to do this is what I trained to do um, I would do it even if no one paid me of course it's better if someone is paying me because don't tell Disney to. that yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they have a contractual obligation now so I'm not worried about them but you know if if you know that saying if you love what you do for a living you never work a day in your life like right. this is what I would be doing anyway so it's it's a pleasure to keep pursuing. Well, don't it. let them take advantage of you on that. You know, no, these, these no, no. I have agents who I have agents <laughs> whose job it is to make sure they don't get away yeah. with anything. Is, tell uh, the shows. That, let's just do the two shows right now. Focus on them for a moment. Um, do you have to prepare differently? Is it? Um, how do you intertwine that? Are they taping the same week? Mm -hmm. You have to learn two scripts? That's got to be difficult. It's tricky. I mean, the difference between, so Coop and Cammy is a multi-camera show. Better Things is a single camera show. So well, Let uh, people know what that is. So yeah, so a multi-camera show is, it's like filming theater. You're on a flat plane, there's three or four cameras at once. Um, and in terms of the week, it's like workshopping a little play every week. So we have three days of rehearsal mm -hmm. and two days of shooting. And we'll get script revisions throughout. But we have some rehearsal time. And so you're kind of doing it, doing the whole story a few times before you shoot it. Whereas Better Things is broken up. into It's a single camera, meaning there's one camera, maybe two. But it's, um, it's a practical house. So the, the cameras aren't fixed on one plane. They're following us all over the place. And we're shooting. Um, there's no rehearsal. You know, you get your schedule and you're just shooting Seriously? scenes every day. I didn't know that. No, there's no rehearsal. And Better Things does a thing called crossboarding. We're getting very technical here. I hope you can follow this. <laughs> but where um, instead of shooting, you know, episode one and then episode two and then episode three, they do something called crossboarding, which means that they'll go to one location and shoot everything for the entire season in that location. So you might be shooting scenes from six different episodes in one day. Which is that's got to be hard. Really, yeah, you got to keep track of sort of where your character is and and right. yeah. and what's going on. So so the preparation really is different for those two shows. And in terms of doing them both, there there was they were shooting at the same time, and I was very lucky that I had producers who worked it out so that I could do both. But there were times that I had both scripts living mm -hmm. in my head, and that was a little difficult. I, <laughs> I was in driving back and forth and. Now, yeah. But you yeah. mentioned, Rebecca, at the outset that you love coming to Santa Barbara for, well, you got married here mm -hmm. and you love wine. Mm -hmm. So when we heard this, this I'm, we're surprising you. With oh, this. it's a wine surprise. Yes. How exciting. Somewhere here. Okay, look. Look what we've got. Marjoram wine. I love marjoram. Oh, there you go. Okay, marjoram, Doug and Marnie marjoram. Mm -hmm. um, I called them, found out that you were coming, uh -huh. and they just opened up a new wine tasting here in Santa Barbara uh -huh. at 19, Mace, 19 Mason Street. And the margins have wonderful wine. We are going to open this. Well, you're, you're going to tell us. Let me first describe what we're going to drink. Are you going to give me the notes before I drink it? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to tell, okay. I have this. Uh, we rehearse oh, everything boy. here. <laughs> I'm going to give you a taste, and we're going to enjoy this. And it says it's the color is soft, pale pink mm -hmm. with hints of orange. Great. Um, the aroma is pretty aromas of strawberries and watermelon with a hint of minerality. Miner, minerality. I love these types of descriptions. Look, and we, this. Look at our budget. We even Why? have wine glasses. 
feel it? Thank you. Good. Of course, I broke a glass before we went on the air. Oh, so is that I, what mine, that was? Mine comes in this. So we're going to open this. Okay. And I know that you'll, as I'm doing this, why don't you tell us what's happening uh, with uh, your two shows for the future? You had some information. Oh, yeah. So um, Coop and Cami finished airing its uh, first season, 21 episodes. You can find them on Disney now and in the constant reruns on Disney Channel. <laughs> so uh, if you have kids in your life, by all means, tell them to tune into that. And Better Things, uh, our finale of our third season, airs this coming Thursday on FX at uh, 10. 10? 10. 10. And uh, seasons one and two are on Hulu, and you can watch all of season three on FX now. Wonderful. Okay, let's. Yes. Let's and they're both. They're both coming back for another season. So oh, no that's awesome. Get rid of me. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. Hey, jobs. Marjorie Wines. That's for Valentina. Valentina. So we say cheers. What do they say in um, Norwegian and Russian? So in the region, it's pretty easy. It's just one word. Skol. Skull, I know that one. Skull. Skull. <laughs> okay, let's give it a taste. Let's see. Doug, Marnie, let, I will tell you right now. Mm. Mm. That's awesome. That's really nice. Very it's good. Very nice. <laughs> Pinot? Yeah. Is it a rosé of Pinot? Do it's, we know? This is, no, this is a, a Marjoram Riviera rosé. Mm -hmm. So tell us as we're drinking this wine, what can we expect with the, new, the shows that are coming up? Uh, so Coop and Cami Ask the World is filming season two right now, and season one is re-airing on Disney Channel constantly and available on Disney Now. And um, Disney Now? Yeah, I think it's called Disney Now. And Better <laughs> Things, <laughs> uh, uh, the, se the season three finale airs next week. We will be back for season four. You can catch seasons one and two on Hulu and all of season three on FX Now. Fantastic. Yay! Yay! Yes. Yay! Well, that's our show for tonight. So for our co-host, Valentina Yasakova, and our guest, Rebecca Ness, and our director, Sarah Lynn, and the entire KBL crew, I'm Ken Boxer. Good night, everybody. Ken Boxer Live is brought to you by the following sponsors. Terry Riken, your broker with a personal touch for all your real estate needs. Gustafson Dance, meeting the highest standards in dance training. Spa Sia. The best in Santa Barbara for holistic facials, waxing, and massage. Gino's Pizza, serving and delivering the best pizza throughout Santa Barbara. The Love and Spoonful, yogurt at its finest. The Daily Grind, espresso, juice, and deli. Spud Nuts Donuts. Zoto's Bowling and Beyond and Z's Tap House for the best in family entertainment. The Magic Castle Cabaret, your one and only place to see magic in Santa Barbara. The Eagle Inn, a family-owned hotel near the beach in Santa Barbara. Petrini's Family Restaurant, La Quinta Inn and Suites. Country Catering, Meat Market and Deli. Lido's Takeout, Jack's Bagels and Bistro. The Ken Boxer Live musical theme composed and arranged by Mr. Michael J. Leslie. From all of us at Ken Boxer Live, I'm Baron Ron Heron. Good night, everyone.